107, Sacramento Police. Unit 99, are you in the clear? Unit 99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, Sergeant Meredith, 909, in service, on the air. This is Sergeant Dan Meredith of Unit 99 at headquarters, Police Department, City of Sacramento, California. My detail is to ride in Unit 99, our tape recorder equipped radio car, and to respond whenever the dispatcher transmits a signal to one of our other units on duty somewhere in the city. Now to tell you more about Unit 99, here is our chief, James V. Hicks, Sacramento Police. When Unit 99 takes off on the dispatcher's radio signal, Everything which happens is real. What you hear, happened. This is the standing order to Sergeant Meredith, the officer in charge of Unit 99. Get it on the spot while it's going on. And as you listen, this is what Meredith does. Now to Unit 99 and Sergeant Dan Meredith on duty. Unit 99. 99, go ahead. 924, second floor 99. 940, units 284 and 268. Okay, 924, 940, coming in. Check 99, came in out of 7. Folks, I just got a 924 to come up to the detective bureau. Yes, we have uh, received a call from the sheriff's office and they have a uh, woman over there who claims she was molested today by four men. And uh, she claims she tied up with them this afternoon in a bar in Skid Row. They got in the car and drove out and they held up someplace. She doesn't know where. She's not familiar with the town. She's only been here a short time. Uh, after they held up this place where they took her out to a house out in the north area and uh, four of them proceeded to rape her, so she says. And uh, she was down in the basement of this place where they attacked her. And uh, when she had an opportunity, she jumped out the window and ran next door to a neighbor's house and uh, got a hold of the sheriff's office. And they, in turn, uh, contacted us due to the fact that we had a robbery this afternoon at the Delta Club. That's on 25th and J? 25th and J. I see you have some mug pictures here. Are these some of the suspects? Yeah, and sure, and uh, talking to the girl and uh, uh, showed her a group of mug pictures and she picks out there's three men in this group of pictures that uh, were with her this afternoon, according to her. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to uh, check further. We're going out now to talk to the victim to show him these pictures to see if he can identify them. No, we'll go with you. Good deal. Is that the uh, victim's home, Bill? Uh, yes, this is the address we're looking for. We're going to go on in and talk to the victim, show him the pictures. Looks like nobody's here. I talked to this gentleman on, on the phone. phone and I repeated the address. He said, yes, it is. There's right. some paper on the front steps here as if to Nobody's been here for a few days. We're at one of the uh, lower end bars. Oaks just went in to see if he could find this uh, bartender that we're trying to make contact with. Uh, you find him, Bill? Uh, I'm going to Carly's home. I got his phone number. I'll call his home and see if he's there. Well, he wasn't here. No, he's not here at the bar. Going in the station for that? Yes. Yeah. Bill, did you make contact? No, there's nobody home at the uh, phone number that I called. But this is uh, getting to be quite a chase. Well, this is the type of business we're in chasing. Okay. Where are you going now? We're going out into the north area and trying to locate the, the woman's purse that she lost out there and talk to the people. Well, we're trying to verify the story of the men and the story on her story to us on the attack. And we're out in the north area meeting two sheriff's cars, Captain Munich, George Munich, and one of the patrol cars are out here. We're going to line up something. 
in the area where the attack took place and at the hangout of these suspects. She claims that she drove the car on the stick up this afternoon. <laughs> what time was the stick up? Four to four. Four to, yeah, three forty-five. She said it was 5 or 5.30. Uh, that was the house next door next to the door, one that she jumped out of. 1809, and we picked her up at 1801. Yeah. She picked out three men out of a group of pictures we had and said they were the men. Well, we know two of them are in stock in the state hospital. We had it verified in the car of Stockton. <coughs> The only thing I, you can't discount her story because no, by God, she, huh? Not completely. Not completely. That's what I say because the gal, well, you the, the, can on the, on the men now. I mean, if this guy picked her up and took her out there, why? Well, uh, I'm, I'm to the place now where I don't believe there's four men and I don't think she was raped. I think what we ought to do is go over there and see yeah. if there's a basement, I think. I don't think you can discount it all together because some of the stuff she says is true. I mean, we've checked it's true. And one thing that, that makes me believe she, she comes up with this picture as the guy that... One of the guys was with her. All right, the victim in the robbery, he comes that looks the same guy and says it uh, resembles the guy. He said, that's not him, but he says he's got all these features. Well, I mean, you got, you got a little bit there to hang your hat on. So I don't think we can discount it. I think we ought to go over and talk to those people anyhow and see see what... Uh, you want to go with us, George? Sure. I'll go with you. We don't need the boys. No. My name is Dennis. I'm with the Sheriff's Office, and these are officers from the Sacramento Police Department. And we'd like to talk to you about a woman by the name of... Uh, I don't know her name now. She was here, and there was a couple of officers here this evening. I just talked to her. How did she get here? Uh, she came in taxi with uh, Sergeant. Uh, he he stayed here, I guess, till uh, I guess about nine o'clock. Why he had a cab come back and pick him up. You're in the service, are you? That's right, tech sergeant. Okay, now what time did this uh, cab arrive? Uh, and the it, it was between four thirty and five. She come in uh, and we started playing penny any poker. She had one can of beer. She didn't play it. And then she laid down on the couch. And she had to go to the bathroom, so she went to the bathroom and she locked the door. So uh, we checked about 15, 20 minutes after she went in there. Uh, the door was locked, so I had to go outside. And the screen door or the screen window was open. So she went in, locked the door, and crawled out the window. Then, what she, was and, uh, that, then she went over to the neighbors, I guess, over there. Or something. You said he got here about 4.35 o'clock. Huh? Yeah, it was between 4.30 and You know and where five. he met her, did he say? Where? Uh, no, he didn't know. It was some bar downtown. But he didn't know which one. Didn't was. know which bar. No. Did he was say he what, uniform time, he, what time, time he had? No, money? he was in civilian clothes. Civilian clothes. Hmm? Did he say he stayed what time he had met her down there? No, he didn't. I don't think he stayed that. It was sometime today, though. Maybe afternoon or something like that. And they, uh, he called me, uh, I think it was about, uh, about 4.15. I, I got home from the field. I got off work at 4 o'clock. I, I get home about 4 o'clock every evening. It's about 4.15, 4.20. He called me. So, uh, he said he was coming out. Do you have any children? Uh, uh, no, I don't. Uh, uh, neighbors? Just my wife. Is there any neighbor children here? Yeah, there's two over here, and I believe one on the other side here. Do you have what? a basement in this house? No. There's no basement? No, there's no basement. She's given us a fantastic story, and we have to check it out. That's why we didn't have yeah. to inconvenience well, here. Well, I, I heard that from the two officers who was here before this yeah. evening. I think something about uh, bank robbers and killing the service station attendant and <laughs> everything else. 
Well, we got quite a story from her, and uh, we have to check them out. So yeah, just <laughs> I can understand that. Bill, this doesn't look like a place uh, for a hideout or a, a scene of a crime. What do you think? No, it doesn't. Uh, Dan, it's a residential area, and there are nice people live out here. The story that the girl gives us apparently is just a figment of her imagination more than anything else. Are you going back in the station now and have another talk with her? Yes, we're going to talk to her again as soon as we get into the station, as soon as we can leave here. And we'll also try and contact the bartender that uh, was in one of the bars that she was supposed to have been in. We're back to the detective bureau. I'm going to talk to the young lady a little further. Now, we were out to the north section out there and talked to those people. We were at the house in which you were attacked by these four men. There was no basement in that house. We saw where you went out the bathroom window. We know that you went out the bathroom window because they told us that you went out the bathroom window. We were at the house next door and talked to the people there, and she said that you did come in the house and that you asked her to call the police, which she did. Now, who was the sergeant? that you went out there with in the cab. Is that what they told you? Well, they were there. Bunch of hooey. They were there. Somebody's giving you a bunch of hooey. And there's no, yeah, I think somebody is, and I think it's you. No, I'm not giving you a And the woman out there at that particular house that you're supposed to have been raped by these four men does not have any children. Ask the policeman who brought me in here. We've talked to the policeman that brought you in here. We've got your purse out here. Sure, and they told me that they she had two children. Who told you? She did. She said she had two children and she couldn't come to the police station. Now you're confused. Now, we know that you didn't leave the bar down here with three men. Let's get this thing straight. I'm getting tired now. You took a cab from one of these gin mills down here with a fellow, and you went out to that new place out there. You were in the house. They were playing some penny ante poker. You had a can of beer and you went into the bathroom. You locked the door and you got scared or something and you went out the window. Now, why should I pick out them guys? I don't know why they picked them out. I could have given you 14 others and you picked them out. Well, two of those fellows aren't around here. Two of the guys that you picked out are in Stockton but State Hospital. Kids. We know that. We, we, we called Stockton by phone. They went out and checked out there. Why and should I they to... call you and give you a big line? Well, I don't know why you want... should. If I didn't want to tell you the truth. We've traveled about 60 miles around this city of ours and then gone out north out here to try and check things out. We've got it checked out. All right, I told you. I said you I would show sure you the same guy. Huh? You don't believe me. I don't believe you. All Why right. should I? You, you turn me loose and check out. Two and a half. Tomorrow, if I see them guys, I'll bring them right in here. Where did you meet them? I told you I met them down to the Arch and Fights Club. What time? About 12 and 1. Between 12 and 1? Between 12 and 1, because Gus didn't come in this morning until 11.30. What time did you leave Gus's down there? About 12 o'clock this morning. About so I went in there about 11. So I didn't leave home this morning until after 11.30. Well, this afternoon, when did you leave the bar with these three guys? What time was it? About 2. About 2 o'clock? About 2 o'clock. And you went to Frank's place? Yes. And you met another guy there? Right. How long did you stay at Frank's place? I was in there only about enough to have one drink. Long enough to have one drink? Fifteen minutes? Twenty minutes? Mm, about fifteen minutes. Did you play the music box? Mm -hmm. And from there, where did you go? I just went, we went to that place that we went to. Did you go, like to know about did you go right straight out there? Went right straight, right straight the out there. And where did they park the car? 
Right in front of the place. Right in front of the place. You'll hear about it probably tomorrow. We Come better in. report on an armed robbery, yes. But I don't remember where it was at. I told you, I don't know Sacramento. What kind of a place was it? I don't know. You're familiar with bars, aren't you? Sure, but I was Do you half think it was a bar? Huh? I was half cockeyed by then. What do you mean by half cockeyed? I don't remember. I don't remember nothing. What do you mean by half cockeyed? I remember cockeyed? robbing the place, and I heard a gunshot. But as far as the place where it was, that I... What kind of a place it was it? It back to me. I even sat in here and tried to remember, and I can't remember. What kind of a place was it? I don't know. Furniture store? Grocery store? Mm -hmm. Butcher shop? I don't know. I just can't tell you where it was at, what it was, or nothing. Well, I can't buy I your can't story. Get I can't buy any part of it. No. I, I, I think this. I don't remember what it how was. Long, I how, can't. How long have you been drinking? I haven't had nothing to drink for over a week. Last Friday was my birthday, and I did go out last Friday and celebrate my When birthday. did you start drinking this time? This time? Yes. This morning. At what, what time this morning? First drink I had was down there to the arch. What time? About 11. What did you do last night? Stood home, I still went. Did you drink last night at all? Nothing. You started time. this morning at 11 o'clock? Sure. And how much do you think you drank during the t period of time? About two drinks. Enough to get drunk on? No, I drank huh? one drink before them guys came in. Do you think you had enough to get intoxicated? Huh? No. Are you under the influence of a narcotic? No. Do you ever use narcotics? What's that? Heroin or no. mar smoke marijuana? No. Or? Huh? Never did. Well, you must have had more than two drinks, or mm -hmm. it doesn't take much to get you intoxicated because you were. Well, I used to be a good barmaid. No. Well, you know bars, don't you? Sure. Wouldn't you know a bar if they pulled right up in front of one? Yeah, but it wasn't. No bar, I know that, but what it was, I don't remember. When was this stick-up? When was, I don't know. I've never had a headache before in my life. When was this stick-up? Well, I called you guys. I would have never left there if it was something... What is today? What, what day is today? Friday, Thursday, or Friday. Mm. Thursday, Friday. This is Friday. That's right, it's Friday. Because a week ago, it was my birthday. Well, let me ask you this now. Let's get back to this deal out in the north section. Here. Were you in a house where there was a basement? I was in a house where there was a basement. Was that a house that had the basement? The one in which you jumped out the window? I remember running and going out of a window. I mean, I screamed and I hollered. Is that the house that you were raped in? I'm pretty sure it was. Were you drunk? I don't know. After I got hit once, that's it. Hit by what? A fist. Where did they hit you? If you don't believe me, right here. Right back there is where I was in that car wreck in there. Well, how can you account? Every time I get a hit, sir, I how, can, how can you account for the fact that uh, that you arrived out there at that address in a taxi cab with I, one man? I never. Why in the world would I go to some place like that when I don't know Sacramento? People out there, the man took you out there in a cab. He also came from there in a cab, but was which was checked. I came out here in the cab? He was. He left the house about 9 o'clock this evening in a cab. We've checked that out. Well, Oaks, what's the final disposition on this one? Well, we haven't come to any conclusion. We've checked out her whole story, everything that she's told us. We finally, I finally got the bartender that was on duty. He uh, tells me that she was in the bar. He knows her from sight. Uh, that she was in with a man, introduced this man who wanted a job as a part-time bartender. And that the two of them left, she came back alone, she was in the bar alone, had a couple of drinks, left a second time and returned shortly and had a couple of more drinks and left a third time and nobody was with her.
In other words, she wasn't with three or four of the men. She was not. We checked the house that she was supposed to have been attacked in. There's no basement. Uh, the people out there are, are nice people. They tell us that she arrived with a man in a taxi cab and that she uh, was in the house for a while, went into the bathroom, locked the door, and didn't come back out. They investigated and found that she'd gone out through a window. She made a phone call from the house next door, and she was brought in to the sheriff's office. We contacted her there for the first time, and we have her here now. Now, she said something about losing her purse. Where was that purse found? purse was found at the side of the building where she came out of the window. In other words, that was the house that she was uh, visiting the first time. That was the house. Now, she denies that she went to that house in a taxi cab. She absolutely denies it. And the people out there state that she definitely arrived with a friend of theirs whom they know well. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like nothing jibes here. After five hours' work, was it? Yes, it's been at least five hours. I think she's she's very confused yet. And I think what we'll do is to book her and talk to her tomorrow morning after she gets some sleep. The officers who investigated this case became a little impatient. You can hardly blame them. They had spent, as you heard, about five hours checking out a report that apparently was the product of the woman's imagination. Two of the men she identified were in a state hospital at the time. The home where she said she was attacked had no basement. The soldier who took her there confirmed the story of his friend, that the woman arrived in a taxi with one man, that she claimed to have been in a car in the neighborhood where a holdup actually took place must be considered pure coincidence. As a matter of fact, two men were arrested later in connection with the robbery but neither was identified by the woman. Painstaking investigation, however, is the basis of good police work, and the woman's story was not dismissed until it had been checked in every detail. This is Unit 99, presented in cooperation with Station KFBK in Sacramento, California. These on-the-scene tape recordings were provided by the Sacramento Police Department and were made on duty by Sergeant Dan Meredith in Unit 99. Your host is Chief James V. Hicks of the Sacramento Police Department. KMA 907, Sacramento Police. Unit 99, are you in the clear? Unit 99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, Sergeant Meredith, 909, in service, on the air. Unit 99 has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.